Hello everyone, and welcome back to making a chess game with me, I guess. It's not Code Academy Lessons, it's something new that I'm trying out once more. If you missed out the last lesson, which was an introduction and what's going on, then please do watch it because we did cover quite a bit. So today, what I plan on doing is slightly expanding on the pseudocode, so thinking of more pseudocode, and then maybe uh, going into more detail. So, so far what we've done is we've established a chessboard, we've put the pieces on it, well, we haven't put the pieces on it actually, we've planned out how we can call the pieces, we've put in whether we can, how we might be able to check uh, valid moves later on, we have definitely made the board though. So, two important things that we definitely have to start off by doing is making a new function, also as you can See, I've kind of changed up the pseudocode a bit. Not changed up, but I've just put stuff in capitals that's supposed to be from the pseudocode. So basically, anything that isn't a name that you've put should be in capitals. Um, also, here I decided to call it a dictionary, seeing as we were going to be using Python and it is going to be a dictionary. So to the dictionary as well here. Dictionary. Uh, I know that that's not really pseudocode at all, but whatever, <laughs> it doesn't matter for now really. So the function that I'm thinking of that's really important is display board. So if a player wants to display the board to see it so that they can decide what move to make, we definitely want to make that possible because otherwise how do they know unless their memory is really good. I know you can play mind chess, but this is we ha I'm making this program for the exact reason so that you don't have to play mind chess. So I definitely want to have this function called display board. So uh, chessboard function, clear chessboard. So let's just say what it would do. We want to, so sets up, this would set up the, so all of the pieces in their correct positions. There we go. So we ha from a blank board, we're going to be moving to this board. And that should be quite easy. We just assign a piece to each uh, spot that needs a piece. And that should be fine. I'm going to put that in a comment because for now, that's all we need. We can think about it later on. So what else do we need to do? So a more quite an important thing in chess Conditions for winning. So perhaps, maybe we don't actually want this to be a dictionary, but we want it to be a class to check whether we have winning conditions on the board. Uh, however, we don't really have to make it a class as long as after a move is made, we run a function on the board to check whether there's check or checkmate, or maybe even stalemate depending on the conditions. So we can have a function, which we will again define over here. Uh, check condition for board. I think that that should be fine. And in here, I will just make a quick note to say what it does. So check whether the so let's think about it. After a move is made, we will want to check the new conditions on the board for whether it is ch uh, check, checkmate or stalemate. Check after a move has been made, whether the new conditions are check, checkmate, stalemate or none. So if there are none, then the game continues on normally. However, if it's one of those, then, well, we have to tell the user, and if it's check, then we might want to call on some special actions by uh, kind of giving restrictions to check valid move, or restricting it more, so that only certain pieces can be moved to protect the king. Uh, and that, we don't have to go into too much detail of that for now. 
or do we? I think that we have actually planned out most of the things now. I can't really see much that we haven't. So let's start getting into more detail then. First of all, uh, oh, you can notice the keyword void here. I thought I'd mentioned that. Void just means the method or function returns absolutely nothing. However, because it moves the piece, it, it's going to move the piece uh, while it's g doing stuff in the dictionary. We could also perhaps make it dictionary, so it returns the dictionary of the board. Uh, we could make it either one. It depends on how you want to do it. If we're working with pointers, we can make it void. However, because we are going to be working in Python, uh, I think that I'm actually going to keep it as a dictionary. So, uh, let's think about the piece. And uh, dictionary method move piece. So, a certain piece is going to have a certain position. So, this method will need to accept. I'm going to be using parentheses for the parameters it requires. It's going to require a piece. So, which piece? It's going to require location, yeah, location of piece where to move. So this is what is going to require. Then inside of it, what we can say is, well, take the piece, find the location of, well, find the location of the piece take the piece and move it to wherever it is. Let's just start off with that simply without doing any check valid move. Uh, so what we want to do then is make the space which the piece was on blank. So let's start off with that. Uh, so, piece, so location of piece of piece equals blank. Then we can have piece, so where to move, equals piece, and then we have, what else do we have? Yeah, it, now we have swap them. So this is the simplest thing. We make the location from which you've removed the piece blank, and you made the location to which you move the piece, have the piece in it. So maybe of how I'm visualizing this, showing you how I'm visualizing this might help, so let's just show you, maybe, I think, because it's textual, it might not be very easy to visualize, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. so, is that eight, or have I, no, that, uh, that is eight, so, imagine each one of these pound symbols is a blank space. Uh, why don't we say that we just have the queen over here. We don't have to put the locations in because, well, we know the locations from where the queen is located because you can infer it from the dictionary. We can just say q is here. So if we want to move q to, say, here. Uh, with our method, because we're not checking, we could even move it to here. But let's just play along for now. We want to move the queen to this spot. With this, what I'm going to be doing is deleting the queen, putting a blank spot here, and then putting the queen there. And that's all this method would do. Or in pseudocode, that's what it would do. Then if we wanted to move it again, I could call the method once more. Um, and yeah. Maybe what I just thought of, well, how do we know who, who, which player's turn it is? We want to be running a constant while loop. So first of all, player, uh, white player takes move, then black player, white player, then black player. Black pieces player, of course, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, input move to make. So we can have, uh, while, we can have a while true loop here because this is going to be constant, or, actually we don't have to have that, we can have check conditions of board, well, 
check conditions of board doesn't equal so this is the sign for doesn't equal to as you might remember it doesn't equal to checkmate or stalemate checkmate and it doesn't equal stalemate let me just get this here and it's not stalemate there we go input this and so on uh, we can also say something like here white layer we can define that later on and then we can have black player and again the same thing as the white player let's just oh, I do not need that there for sure so white player black player we can just have uh, whose turn it is and I am going to make it as a node because it's not really going to be affecting the game I'm just going to be calling allowing one player to move one player's pieces and if they input uh, the wrong ca so let me explain this maybe better if you're the white player you should not be able to input lowercase letters it should tell you invalid input if you're the black player you should not be allowed to input uh, capital uh, letters because those are the white player's pieces and you're not allowed to move them so whose players which player turn it turn is it Uh, so something like that I'm not too sure what it is going to be straight away but we want something like that and if check valid move and check so we can have another function uh, so if it's white players turn then we want to make sure that they're entering the correct capitalized letters so perhaps we want a new function Oops. Which check player turn? Uh, I know I should. I probably should have what it returns. Uh, for this one, I will. Have it's going to return string function check player turn. I could even have boolean for this because you can only have two players. However, I feel like string would be much easier. Check player turn. Uh, and that's going to return a string so we can have if check valid move and check player turn then they're allowed to do this uh, so and check player turn so I will need to slightly refine this in programming However, the basic idea is there. So let's make a note here. Returns white or black depending on letter input. However, I will need to check other conditions as well to make sure that the letter they are inputting is valid. In I can't really explain what I mean right now, but in uh, when we're actually making the program, it should be much easier, which is why this is pseudocode as well. So I think that I'm going to leave it there for now. I might be running over my time as I did last time. I said 15 to 20 minutes. And yeah, so thank you so much for watching this video. Again, if you enjoyed watching it, please give me a like, share and subscribe. Please tell me how you're getting on, how I'm getting on with this series, if you're enjoying it or not. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.